to, uh, in the 1940s who started doing makeup uh, for guests on a TV program that was called Face the Nation. And she did that to support her family, uh, starting with that job and moving on into other jobs. But particularly in that job, she got to know nine presidents of the United States and subsequently became a college professor and the author of four books. And so we've given a description of her in the um, program. I just want to say personally that she, uh, she interviewed me for National Public Radio about a year ago. It was like the best interview I've ever had. Uh, she was absolutely wonderful. We talked about a wide range of health issues, including phthalates and uh, children's toys and other cutting edge issues that at the time nobody had heard very much about. She's just fantastic, and I'm just so honored to, to be here to honor her today. I agree with everything that everything has been said, and I'm grateful to the hostess and the hosts, and I'm honored. I thought, instead of talking to you about presidents, I'd talk to you about some first ladies. And I think the first thing I would do for a first lady would be to give her your working guide, <laughs> which would be very good. But the only credential that a first lady had was that she had to be married to the fellow that ended up being the president. And so when she would go into the White House, the first thing she was trying to do was to make a home out of the White House for her family. And yet, there were some fascinating things that happened with some of these first ladies that I had the privilege of working for. But I thought I'd tell you first how I happened to be doing makeup when I was teaching at George Washington University, later American University, and then 26 years at Georgetown. The reason was that I, we were a military family, and we came to Washington, and uh, we went to the same church with Eisenhower, and I, I thought it was kind of fun, the way you always had to deal with the Secret Service on the day the president was gonna come to church. And so I got interested in uh, doing a series of television shows on churches of the presidents. And my show was in one end of the studio, and in those days we had those big cameras that a great big strong guy had to push, and Face the Nation was in the other side. <clears throat> and uh, the producer of Face the Nation came over to me and he said, your people look wonderful, mine look terrible, what do you do? And I said, well, I just go buy a compact in the drugstore and I do whatever has to be done to make them look good under the lights and the lenses. And he said, well, next week we had speaker Sam Rayburn and we're going to do the first four camera show. And if you'll come and do his makeup will pay you $19. <laughs> so when the time came, the director greeted me and he said, um, the speaker thinks he doesn't need any makeup. So he said, go down there and see what you can do. So I did. And I said, Mr. Sam, if you let me powder your nose, I will not relieve you of your manhood. <laughs> and once he recovered, he said, well, you just go ahead, honey. <laughs> so from then on, I moonlighted on other days and worked on Face the Nation and enjoyed it every bit and was privileged to do John Kennedy's makeup nine, 11 times before he was president. And he would drive us crazy. He would come in the studio and he'd say, uh, do you like this necktie? Shall I cross my legs? Do you think I need to take voice lessons and lose my accent? And he did. He went to New York and he also took a course in t 
television techniques, mm -hmm. and I think he really was our first president who understood camera ready. But uh, to go back to some of these first ladies, Eleanor Roosevelt was the first first lady that I had the privilege to make up. And uh, we always, we, we really got a kick out of her. She drove her own car, she cut the budgets, she uh, volunteered in the kitchens, and uh, she, she reduced expenses all around. And um, so when she came to the Mayflower, I said, well, I know that you'd like to uh, not have very much makeup. And she said, of course, that's right. So I found her a little corner over in the corner, and she would get her notes. And uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was wonderful. I was delighted. But the point was that many years ago, when I was a kindergarten teacher and just got out of college, I went to Columbus, Ohio, and heard Eleanor Roosevelt speak, and I never forgot her speech. And I told her that, and we had a good time. We all loved Lady Bird. Lady Bird was so kind to the television crews. She'd make a pot of lemonade, and she'd carry it out, and uh, she would, uh, invite us different places. And uh, they did a funny movie, which everyone enjoyed. They did one cut of Lady Bird digging and digging and digging when she was doing her beautification of America. And so we had, the, in the background, they had a building falling down. And they showed that at one of the big press dinners, and everybody thought that was kind of funny. And uh, those daffodils that you see growing around the bridges, honestly, I think she planted the original ones her very, very own self. Now, um, you have to think about what some of the other first ladies did. Take Dolly Madison. Now, here's Washington of fire, and they had told her she had to leave the White House. And she ran back and said, I want to take the George Washington Gilbert Stewart uh, picture with me. And they said, well, you can't get it out of the frame. The thing is nailed to the wall. She said, take it out. <laughs> and she fled into the wilds of Virginia and saved that wonderful portrait which stands today in the East Room. Now, Harry Truman, he appreciated a first lady, and he wrote, I hope someone will take time to evaluate the true role of the wife of a president and to assess the many burdens she has to bear and the contribution she makes. And of course, their daughter Margaret wrote a wonderful book on the First Ladies. And if you want to enjoy a book, it's a great book. Now, one of the things that I did with the First Lady in the White House was the tour of the White House with Jackie Kennedy. And I, I was just fascinated with the way Jackie had burrowed around down in the old dusty archives of the White House and dug out all the good furniture she could find that was authentic. And she knew what she wanted to say. And that Charles Collingwood was a real hunk, and uh, <laughs> they got along just fine. Uh, I had an interesting experience with Pat Nixon on the Christmas in the private quarters, which was the first one that they had in the White House. And uh, Pat had brought a box of Christmas ornaments that were sentimental and meant a lot to them. And uh, their dog, King Tomahoe, which is a mm -hmm. but a big brown soap, kept eating the Christmas ornaments. Yeah. And so uh, the director said, take the dog in the bathroom, and when we're ready, we'll call him out. Well, I'm wrestling this great big dog, and then I realized that President Nixon was helping me. And so we, here's 
the president and me and, and the dog in the bathroom. And somebody turned the key in the lock. And of course they realized that the president was missing and so we got out. I did Nixon's makeup the night he resigned and uh, he was in bad shape. He was sobbing, he'd been saying goodbye to his constituents and his friends. And six minutes to air, I thought, what can I do for this man? And I thought, I'll t remind him of the time he and I got locked in the bathroom with the dog. <laughs> and if you see President Nixon's video of tomorrow noon, I shall resign the office of the presidency. He was in pretty good shape. <laughs> um, we have to own Sarah Polk, the hail to the chief. She's the person that decided that the president needed a good energy. And um, then you talk about some of the uh, other uh, first ladies. Uh, Martha Washington never liked to live there and never did live there. Abigail Adams hung her laundry in the East Room, and of course she was the mother of another president. Now, they accused uh, Mrs. Lincoln of being extravagant. She had boxes of white gloves, and uh, we always got a lot of fun out of Nancy Reagan because she would sit there and look adoringly at her husband the whole time. But she did a wonderful thing, just say no to kids with drugs. Now Mamie was glad to have her men living above the store, home from the wars. And um, she, um, she liked pink. And she, she turned everything in the private quarters to pink that she could. Now, Betty Ford had breast cancer. And what this group is doing for breast cancer is a wonderful thing. And the thing about Betty Ford with the breast cancer was she never made a secret of it. Okay. So, um, all of what I can say about First Ladies is they tried to make that place a home, and I was honored to be with them. Thank you.